Our next operation to consider is division. Just as multiplication represented repeatedly adding together groups, division represents splitting objects into equally sized groups. There are two different ways we can think about division. Let's say we want to divide 6 by 3. There are two ways we can understand this. We can think I have, for example, 6 squares and I want to divide them into 3 groups. Right, so here are my 6 squares and I'm just going to count them off in order to divide them into groups. Right? So this square will be in group 1, this square will be in group 2, this square will be in group 3. This square will be in group 1 again, this square will be in group 2, and this square will be in group 3. So how many squares in each group? Well, these two squares are both in group 1, these two squares are both in group 2, and these two squares are both in group 3. So if I have 6 squares and I split them into 3 groups, I end up with 2 squares per group. There's another way I can think about this problem. Instead, I can think of this as 6 squares, and I want to split them up so that I have 3 squares per group. So again, 6 squares, and we'll say these 3 squares are group 1, right? 3 squares per group and these three squares can be group two, three squares per group. So one, two, three squares in group one, one, two, three squares in group two. You'll notice, looking at these pictures, that the pictures are very, very similar, that's not a coincidence. We get, of course, two groups. We can think of division in both ways. We can think of division as, I say how many groups, and I find out how big the groups are. Or, we can think of division as, I say how big the groups are, and then I find out how many groups, right? Both of those are ways of understanding division. Now, division is a little bit of a weird operation. I'm not going to draw division for you in terms of lengths right now. I will show that to you but only when we have some more complicated numbers available to us. Now, division is a little bit of a weird operation, and for that reason, I'm not going to show you division in terms of lengths right now. I will later on when we have some slightly more complicated numbers available to us. Instead, I'm going to talk about the relationship between division and multiplication. This fact that we've just discovered is that 6 divided by 3 is 2. And this fact, as we can see by looking at the pictures and by looking at the nouns in the sentences that we just wrote, means the same thing as to say that 2 times 3 is 6, or 3 times 2 is 6. Division is the reverse of multiplication. We can understand the question, 
6 divided by 3 equals what? is the same question as 3 times what gives me 6. Now, this understanding as reverse multiplication is actually going to help us a lot when we go to actually perform division. But one of the reasons that division is a weird operation is in the whole numbers, division doesn't always work. What do I mean by that? Well, what if instead of 6 divided by 3, I said, what is 16 divided by 3? And I'm going to understand this as 16 squares divided by 3 squares per group. So here's my 16 squares, and here's a group of 3, and another group of 3, and another, and another, and another, and then what? Well, I can't form another group of 3. I have 1 left over. What I write is 16 divided by 3 is 5 with a remainder of 1. This little r I read as remainder. Notice 5 remainder 1 is not a number. What we're saying here is that 16 squares divided by 3 squares per group gives us 5 groups and 1 square left. All right, 1 square remaining. A remainder of 1 square. So that means I can't write 16 divided by 3 is 5, remainder 1 means 3 times 5 remainder 1 is 16. Because I can't do multiplication to 5 remainder 1, because it's not a number. Later on we will learn some ways of expressing that as a number, but we're not there yet. Instead, I write that 16 divided by 3 equals 5 remainder 1 means 3 times 5, right, 5 groups of 3, plus 1 left over gives me my 16 squares. In a future video, we're going to talk about how we work with remainders when they come up in real life. Working with remainders is also going to be helpful to us when we go to do division to large numbers. Let's say we want to divide 4,782 by 8. Obviously, I don't really want to do that by drawing a picture of 4,782 squares and dividing that by 8. Let's see if the place values can help us. Right, we have 4,000s, 700s, 8 10s, and 2 units. And we want to divide that all by 8. Well, we can start by taking our 4,000s divided by 8. And we're going to think of this as divided by 8 groups. So we'll start by taking our 4,000s divided by 8 groups. Well, 
Well, we can't get any thousands in each group, right? Because we don't have enough to have 1,000 in each group. So we're just stuck with no thousands per group and four thousands left over. Okay, let's go down to hundreds. We have four thousands and seven hundreds. Renaming those thousands, that's forty hundreds and seven hundreds. So that's forty-seven hundreds. Forty-seven hundreds divided by eight groups. Well, I know that eight times five plus seven gives me forty-seven, right? And if I only have seven of something left over, I can't put another thing into each of eight groups. So I think I'm going to get five hundreds per group and seven hundreds left over. Okay, well that's progress. I know I have five hundreds in every group. Let's do tens next. So I'm going to keep my seven hundreds that I have left and then I have eight tens. Renaming those hundreds into tens, I have seventy-eight tens. Seventy-eight tens divided into eight groups. Well, let's see. Eight times nine is seventy-two. Seventy-two plus six is seventy-eight. So I can actually get nine tens per group. And six tens left over. Okay, this is working pretty well, right? Because now all I have left is six tens and two units. Renaming again, we get sixty-two units. Sixty-two units divided by eight groups. What will we have? Well, let's see. Eight times eight is sixty-four. That's too much. We must have eight times seven. That's fifty-six. Plus six more gives me sixty-two. So that means I have seven units per group and six left over. Okay, what do I have in each group then? I have five hundreds, nine tens, and seven units. I have 597 in each group and six left over. Now, is this how we actually do long division? No, of course not. But this is the logic that drives that procedure that we have for long division. Let's take a moment and review that procedure that we have for long division. 
and then let's see if we can find a way to get this answer out of a calculator as well. So to actually do the long division, we set up one of these division brackets and we go through one digit at a time. 8 goes into 4, 0 times. It goes into 47, 5 times, because 5 times 8 is 40. 47 minus 40 is 7. Bring down the 8. 8 goes into 78. 9 times, because 9 times 8 is 72. 6 left over. Bring down the 2. 8 goes into 62 7 times, because 7 times 8 is 56. 62 minus 56 is 6. And that's our remainder. Again, notice Here's that 47. That's how many hundreds we had. Here's that 78. That's how many tens we had. Here's that 62. That's how many units we had. This long division algorithm is a way of keeping track of what we just did with the words. Now let's see what happens when we put 4,782 divided by 8 into the calculator. We have 4,782 divided by 8. The calculator says 597.75. The calculator doesn't say 597 remainder 6. The calculator doesn't tell us about the remainder. What should we do? Right? 597.75 is a totally legitimate answer to this division problem. But sometimes we really want to know about the remainder. Well, okay. The good news is the calculator does tell us about the 597. We just need to figure out how to find out about the remainder 6. Well, okay. So here's what the remainder means, remember. To say that 4,782 divided by 8 is 597 remainder 6 just means that if I have 597 in each of 8 groups, and then add in the 6 that are left, I get my 4,782 back. When we're trying to find out the remainder, then, we're trying to find out the missing thing in an addition problem. Right? That's just a job for subtraction. The remainder is just 4,782 minus 597 times 8. We can use that division bracket, right? We put 4,782 divided by 8 into the calculator and ignore all that stuff after the decimal point. We just have 597 things in each group. 8 times 597 
is 47.76. And then we subtract. We have 6 left. And that's our remainder.